translation says, from those who have no mercy. Right. You know that just seems to be some folks that when they got you down, they really want to put it to you. Right. They, they, they just don't want to show any mercy right. at all. And so this is the type of person that he's praying to God concerning that he's having some trouble. And as I said, a, a, a judicial term, he says, Lord, I need you to plead my cause. Because there's nothing I can say and do that's going to change those folks. Yes, sir. Have you ever been there? Yeah. That there's nothing that you can say or do that can change the heart of folk who are intended to do wrong yes. and to come against you to try to oppress you? Yes. It seems to me that he said that he's being both prosecuted and persecuted by those who have come against him. And they are trying to prevent him from fulfilling God's purpose for him. Yeah. Well, when you find yourself prosecuted, persecuted, and folk are trying to prevent you from your purpose, then you got to do what the psalmist does. Pray. Pray. Don't fight. Don't curse. Don't shoot. Pray. pray. Y'all, we need to do some praying in this land today. Have our witness in here? Now, watch the next verse. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? And how he feels. Uh -huh. okay. Make a note of that, church. Uh -huh. Because in the struggle of life, the vicissitudes of life, mm -hmm. there are times when what we know, That's what. and he tells us what he knows, he says, You're my strength, Lord. That's what. I know that. Yes, sir. And yet, the reality of his feelings says, But he, he feels that he's been cast off to the extent that he is mourning as a result of the oppression of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm in conflict. Yes, sir. I know you are my strength. Amen. But I just feel right now that things are so against me uh -huh. that I can't understand in my feelings. What's going on? Amen. Don't ever let what you know or what you feel inter interfere with what you know. Amen. You see, what you know is God is with you. Amen. No matter how you feel. Yes, Our feelings are up and down. Yes. Our feelings run hot and cold. Yes. But when you know that the Lord is your strength, yes, then you have to know that he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you, even when you feel like. Yes, sir. And y'all check the halos now. You had occasion of life. Yes, sir. That when you've gone through something yes, sir. and it's lasted a little while, you begin to wonder, where is the Lord? Yes, sir. Why hasn't he done something? how he feels. But then he goes on. He, he makes a petition unto God. He says, Lord, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto the holy hill and to thy tabernacle. He says this in his petition, Lord, send me light. And that's the word of God, church. Yes, sir. Amen. Psalm says elsewhere, he says that, Lord, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light in my path. Yes. When things look dark, yes, sir. Lord, send your word. Amen. Your word will bring me light. Yes, sir. But then he asks not just for light, but he asks for 
truth also. Yes, sir. Because when you go through what you're going through, y'all listen to church. All right. When you go through what you go through, the enemy will start to whisper to you and try to get you to doubt God's word. Yes, so he said, Lord, send me your light, your word, but send me your truth, your word. God's word is the truth that you and I stand on when we are dealing with life situations. Have our witness in this house today. Lord, I need your light. And I need your truth. Yes, sir. He said this, watch this, church. Let them bring me, let them lead me, and then let them bring me to thy holy hill and thy tabernacle. Where is it then that you should wind up, end up, when you going through what you going through? The psalmist says when God sends his light and when God sends his word, it takes us to the habitation of God, the holy hill and the tabernacle of God. In other words, it takes me to the place where I know God is. Yes. When you go through what you go through, don't let the devil make you stay home and have a pity party. When you go through what, I'm in the Bible, y'all. When you go through what you go through, it ought to lead you to the place where God is. You ought to come to God's house. You ought to say, let me make my way to church today. Bow at the 
all. Yes, sir. I'm going to worship yeah. the Lord. Yeah. And then he says, unto God, my exceeding joy, yea, upon the heart, will I praise thee, O my God. Yes, sir. We don't have a heart today, but we got a pen. Yes, sir. And we got a saxophone. Yes, sir. We got a trombone. Yes, sir. We got a drum. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now somebody say, well, I can't play the piano. Yes, sir. Can't play the saxophone. Yeah. Can't play the trombone yes, or the drum. Yes, sir. But you got a voice. Yeah. You got to open your mouth. That's your instrument. God has given all of us an instrument, a harp to play, that when we get to God's house and we start to worship God, you ought to play your instrument. He closes. He says this. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the help of my countenance and my God. In the last verse, y'all still walking with me, church? In the last, in the last verse, now in the first three, four verses, he's talking to God. In that last verse, he's talking to himself. Y'all get it, church? After he has prayed and talked to God, and God, in that fourth verse, he said, God is my exceeding joy. Then he had to turn around and talk back to himself. All right. Why you acting like this? Yes, yes, Why you acting like God ain't going to come and rescue you? Yes, How many times has God done it before? Yes, Won't he do it? Yes, Won't he do it, y'all? Yes, he had to talk to himself. Yes, sir. And church, there are times we need to start talking to ourselves yes, and reminding ourselves of the goodness of the Lord. Yes, Those who are very astute then recognize that I haven't directly dealt with my subject. All right. I'm going back to verse 4 to do that in close. All right. All right. Because there is a reality. Aha moment. All right. As I believe the psalmist did, when it started to click, yes, sir. that no matter what he was going through, yes. Yes, sir. God is his strength. Yes. He had that aha moment, and then in verse 4, he talked about going to the altar of God to worship. He says, but he's going unto God, my exceeding joy. Yes, sir. Now, he could have just simply said, going to God, my joy. Yes. But he put a modifier there. Yes, sir. Yes, Y'all know what we learned in school. Yes, sir. That modifier is there for a reason. Yes. He didn't just put it there because he needed to use up more faith. Yes, sir. He put it there because he wanted to drive home the point. Yes, sir. He said, now God is my joy. Yes, sir. But he is my exceeding joy. When God is your exceeding joy, even if you're down, you're not out for the count. Yes, joy is going to pick you up. The Hebrew construction of the phrase, God, my exceeding joy, is very interesting, church. The Hebrew construction literally says this. God is the gladness of my joy. All right. Or God is the joy of my joy. All right. God is the joy in my joy. Yeah. He says this, now God is the source of my joy. Mm -hmm. It is because of God that when things aren't going well, that I can look and say, with peace like a river, yes, attendeth my way. Yes. 
but on the days when sorrow like sea billow roll. Yeah. Whatever my lot, God has taught me how to see. Yeah. It's well yeah. with my soul. Yeah. In closing, remember he asked for light and truth to live. Mm -hmm. God is not simply the source of his joy, but God himself is the substance of the joy. Yeah. Often when we talk about the source, we begin to say, well, God bless me. And then if we're not careful, we focus on the blessing and not God. The psalmist wants us to understand that even when God don't give you stuff, just him being God ought to be joy enough in your heart. The song is that, and it reminds me of a song, a hymn of the church. Remember, he started out and asked the Lord, he said, Lord, you my strength. That supposes that he recognizes that he's weak. Yes, sir. Amen. And we have to admit, sometimes we get weak. But the hymn writer says this, church, I'm weak and I need God's strength and power to help me over my weakness, my weakest hour. Let me through the darkness, Lord, thy face to see. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. Lead me, guide me yes, along the way. Yes, For if you lead me, yes, sir. I will not stray. Yes, Lord, let me walk yes, sir. every day with thee. Yes, sir. Amen. Lead me, yes, sir. oh Lord, lead me. Lord is leading you, joy will show up. When you're walking with the Lord, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil, for the Lord is with thee. His rod, his staff will comfort thee. He'll prepare a table before thee at the presence of your enemy. He will anoint your head with oil, your cup running over. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And when all that happens, you ought to have some joy. Even when you come here and you burden down, by the time you see, you ought to be able to join in and say, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world didn't take it away. God is the source of my joy. God is the strength of my joy. God is the substance of my joy. And with joy like that, I clap my hands. With joy like that, I can open my mouth. How about you today? Can you give God a hand clap of praise? Can you tell God thank you? Can you shout glory? glory. Hallelujah. Joy in the moon. Joy in the midnight. Joy when it's raining. Joy. All the time. God bless you. God keep you.